Hi there and welcome back to how to use ANA2. In the last video we had a quick look at the interface and uh, how things are connected together and this one we're going to take a closer look at the wavetable oscillators and I'm going to split this into two videos so it'll be just the basic controls and then we'll look at some of the more advanced stuff. So we have uh, three um, of the same wavetable oscillators that you can have running and you can select your waveform by clicking here and we have our wavetable browser so we have 3D wavetables over on this side we have all the original ANA waveforms and then we have a bank of new HD analog wavetables and then we have our digital wavetables our digital waves here so these ones are all 3D so you can cycle through you can use the morph control we've got a whole bunch of those various types, some aggressive ones um, some just sort of um, analog type ones um, just a whole, a whole bunch of different types so plenty there to keep you going and then we have the original Anna 1 Legacy Waves so if there was anything you particularly liked from Anna 1 these are all here and with the new Anna 2 synth engine all the aliasing from Anna 1 is gone so even though these are the original waveforms they do sound a lot better in Anna 2 and then we have our brand new high definition wavetables and we've got the four basic wave shapes at the top of the menu so easy access to those and then we go in and we have a bunch of different types um, we went into quite a lot of depth with the different types of saw shapes so there's all sorts of different ones some replicate um, Jupiter's Juno's mini moogs and a whole bunch of others so there's loads of, of different options there and then the digital ones are just more random shapes we expanded on the popular kick wave shapes from Anna 1 so we got a whole bunch of waves there and I'm just going to select our basic saw while I show you around um, some of the other features and we can actually um, load up each of the three main oscillators or any of the samplers just from the wave browser page so you've got some quick access there and similar to the preset browser we have a search function so if you just want to see all the saws you can just type saw in and there's a whole bunch of them there okay so each of the wavetable oscillators has a sub control and you can select the different subtypes from a square, triangle or a sine wave and that's the sub level. Now the sub is actually synchronized to the phase of the main wave here so it means you get quite a consistent sound with the sub and especially if you put retrig on with retrig on or off you still get the sub phase synced with the, the main wave um, so it always sounds nice and beefy 
Um, the next control is all our unison controls which are along the top here. We have voices and we've got up to nine voices. <laughs> Got our detune amount. Then we have our detune spread or width, and that controls how wide in the stereo field uh, the voices are being spread out. And then we have our uh, detune shape control, and this. Uh, modifies the spread of the detune. So if it's down at this side, the detunes are all bunched together on the outer edges. And when we put it to this side, the detunes spread out from the center right the way out to the edges. So you can get a more destabilized sort of sound when the shape is open. It's almost quite hoovery sounding. And then if you want a sort of cleaner, more precise detune, you can bring the shape down so they're all bunched up together and they're not as widely spread. So that is the unison mode. Along the top above unison, we have our, um, our basic tuning controls. So octave, semi and fine. Then we have our velocity. That assigns how much um, velocity is assigned to volume. And then we can also, if we're selected in a 3D wave, we can have M velocity, which is Morph Velocity. So Velocity is assigned to the Morph Point. And then we have Key Track. So we can have from 0 right up to 100 Key Tracking. That specifies how the pitch is distributed um, uh, along the keyboard. And then we have um, our pan, which just sends it to the left or right channel. We have our filter output. So this specifies whether the signal of this oscillator is being sent to either filter one or filter two or both at the same time, or if we click this button, it bypasses the filter altogether and just sends it straight through to the amp envelope. So the filter will have no effect. And then over here we have our Morph control, which controls the wave table, the three D wave tables. And if we happen to be set on a single cycle wave, this morph control changes to a phase control. So that's pretty handy. And then we have a pulse width. So we can do that on all wave shapes, 3D or single cycle. And obviously you can have pulse width and morph at the same time. Which is cool. And then we have our sync control. Which is pretty cool. And again, all three of these controls can happen at the same time. So you can do quite a lot of modification there, and these can all be modulated in the mod ma matrix. The last section is FM, and we're going to look at that in a brand new video. So I'll do that in the next video.
thanks everybody for watching commenting and indeed liking we really do appreciate all the support we get here on our sonic academy youtube channel so if you find this video super useful please we'd love you to hit the subscribe button we update the uh, youtube channel every week with new content and if you want to watch some more relevant content just click on the videos beside me